is still plus politics. Now, Dr. Ogbunaya Ono, a former Minister of Science and Technology, has questioned the All Progressive Congress APC over its failure to zone the 2023 presidential uh, ticket to the southeast. Ono disclosed this yesterday at the Eagle Square while delivering his agenda to the party delegates just before the commencement of the voting at the presidential primaries. He asked, and I quote, where is the justice? Adding that he sacrificed his presidential ambition in the past just so two candidates from the Southwest could run. Take a listen. Mr. President will be completing his tenure by 29th of May next year. I think, you know, naturally, naturally, it should be somebody from the Southeast. I'm not saying this because I'm from the Southeast. Somebody from the Southeast that will now replace him. And that will give the opposite of South versus North and Christian versus Muslim. And it will bring stability to our nation. It will strengthen the unity of Nigeria. And uh, I believe that this should have been done. And uh, you know, I personally, 23 years ago, I made a personal sacrifice when there were three parties and I held the presidential ticket of one of the three, but I had to let it go in order to solve a problem in the Southwest to make sure that two Olus contested for the presidency, that head or tail, one will become a president. And that brought down tension in the country. And this is what would have happened if we allow the Southeast to, which is the, I mean, look, look at it. The Southwest has eight years as president, eight years as vice president. Well, can, can you, the South South, they have eight years vice president and president. Where is the justice? Where is the justice? Well, that's the question. Where is the justice? Uh, and I remember watching that and he, there was a loud booing coming from the crowd of delegates who were representing every state in the Federation. So I think the question that came to mind was, um, he was obviously making sense, but why was he getting that much apprehension from a group of delegates in a party that he belonged to? Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think, good evening, viewers. I, I think that um, why I, I would hazard a guess that as to why that booing was happening because it was um, more or less um, almost um, over in terms of the fact that um, this wasn't a place to begin to ask for justice. Um, yes, it was a place to agitate, show your agitation verbally, but it may not have much effect if you've not been planning. Mm. He ha he made a lot of sense. In fact, a lot of things that he said was actually factual, um, especially for, if you look at every region, every region coming out to, of course, agitate for that shift of power. Uh, we're talking about the supreme power now, as in, in terms of um, the, the real crux of what everybody's searching for. Mm. And, and he's thinking to himself, um, since 1999, that we became civilian uh, democracy. Mm. We've had um, Muslim, pre sorry, a northern president. We've had a south south president. Mm. We've had the southwest president, and um, we don't have southeast president. And he, um, when the three parties merged to form APC, was critical. Uh, mm. In fact, was one of the pillars of the AMPP who came yeah. together to form that party. But there's a lot of a lot of play that happens um, before you get to this point. And I'm guessing that that's the reason why that booing was happening. But um, if you think very deeply about it, it made a lot of sense because it runs even much more deeper than that, mm -hmm. down to um, down to the appointments, down to um, appointments at federal appointments, mm -hmm. down to the local government uh, distribution, down to as much as um, the uh, security agencies, spread of security agencies. So, for instance, out of 16 um, uh, heads of uh, security agencies. I mean, you don't have any from Southeast extraction. I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to take you on on that. But yeah. ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ihe Beji is a political analyst. Also joining us uh, via um, Zoom is a legal practitioner Obina Chuku. But Ihe, I want to take you on on that. I have yeah. had this conversation yeah. over and over again about yeah. appointments, about 
people from the southeast yeah. or even the south south you know leading or heading um you know being chief of army staff or naval staff and they will tell you that we don't have a, a huge number of these men mm. and women yeah. in those forces and that you have more of you know people from the north the northeast the northwest the north central in those areas and that's why most of the most of the time you see them rising to those positions it's debatable yeah it's debatable but mm. this is what they say also for anabunaya some on some people would say that what he says or you know talks about as a sacrifice of sorts would be so for some would be that he was rigged out of that office or that position yeah uh, and so why is he saying that he you know sacrificed it or is he trying to say that he was a good luck jonathan in this instance well i mean um before every every appointment is made, so, I mean, it's called positioning. So I mean, every region positions themselves. I mean, for a region for a region to understand the strategic nature of a handshake across very different divides, you need to begin to position yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you need to position yourselves up to the point where you have fully top ranked um, officers who can take over at the highest level of positions, uh, highest level of offices. But then again, it also behoves on the president and the, the, the top office to appoint, make such appointments. Mm. So even if you position yourself up to that top rank and the president does not deem it necessary, you will not get that position. Mm. So for instance, you have an IGP, for instance, who uh, maybe um, has not gotten up to the level of a, um, a DIG, mm -hmm. so to speak, and is going to be picked to be made an IG. What normally would happen is what? I mean, every other person who is above him is retired. Is retired. Mm. So it, it, that's how it works. So at the end of the day, it all boils down to um, not just the preference of the president, but that federal character and the equity, which is one of the things that you know, we are talking about. So aside positioning, that also comes into play. You know, the polit political evaluation and political strategizing mm. um, in the power structure, it has to work that way. And so far, unfortunately, um, it hasn't worked very well for the Southeast. If you look at the spread of the political um, appointments uh, within this uh, circle, if I may, um, you look at the Northwest, Northwest has 37. You look at uh, North Central, 21. You look at um, Southwest, 64. You look at um, Northeast, 29. You look at um, South South, 24. And you look at the Southeast, 15. So these are some of the things that you begin to look at, then you begin to put one or two together, one or two together, and you ask yourself, okay, so where is the equity? And that's exactly, these are some of the things that bring the anger to mm -hmm. what, what he's saying. But you also need to understand the fact that there is a role that is played, as I said earlier, um, by the political class, by the presidency, and there's a role that's played by the region. Mm. The region needs to begin to bond together. I was about to ask, toss that question to you. Uh, by by Chico, um, it's, it, we've heard the Southeast complain over and over and over again about being given the short end of the stick, uh, always, whether it be a government that is even under a South-South government or a Southwest government, the South Southeast always seems to be getting the short end of the stick. And Ihe is also saying that maybe there's a death of, you know, positioning and structuring that would put you in a position where you would be picked for these offices or even for us to be for the southeast to be able to spread and say well it's our turn and, and are able to also make sure that they get that turn but what's your take okay um first thank you for having me um uh, this has become a, a recurring thing in the nigerian policy i I think to me, this is the, this appears to be the closest that I, I South East or people from the South East uh, have got into in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, being the flag bearer of uh, a ruling political party. Why? Why did I say that? Uh, because at least up to, up to midnight or early hours of this morning, at least um, the winner of the APC primaries was not known until uh, the vote started to roll by and the uh, counting started. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would say that uh, we need to de-emphasize this issue of uh, 
um, every time eh, or any time we are close to a political, say, okay, let me be specific, the primaries for presidential election. You begin to hear politicians shout, mention uh, one region or the other. I think we need to de-emphasize that. Okay. Let us, if what Nigeria wants to follow is to allow for the best candidate to emerge, we should completely uh, take a dive into that and, and allow that to work. What that will not mean will be that whoever that will be elected or that will fly the a ticket of a political party it will be by merit. I don't understand why but, in but, one but, breath... But, but, but is there not also a loophole in that? Because you see, um, merit can also, one way or the other, put certain persons, um, you know, in, in, a, in a corner. Again, merit can be that, oh, this guy is smart, he's intelligent, but then how many people does he have lined up behind no. him? That's what pushes again, because politics is a game of numbers, not necessarily about sentiment. So you no. might be smart, you might be Please, good, uh, you might merit it, but then we don't give it to you because you don't have the numbers. No. So what happens then? Marianne, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm, I don't like this in one breath. The politicians will be shouting north and south let zone to north and south. In another breath, you will see the politicians do uh, exactly opposite. If the main aim, or maybe to encourage stability and uh, inclusiveness, and Nigerians or the political parties decide or decide to now go zoning, why don't we go allow that zoning to work or allow the zoning to get to the extreme. Yeah. For instance, over from 1999 up to the, into this administration, the issue of zoning between North and South worked until we got to the point where the zoning was again to come to the South. And looking at the South, you will, you will see that the only region or zone that I has not taken a shot at the presidency from 1999 now. In the Southeast, ordinarily, for equity and fair play, it should have been zoned like it was zoned in 1999 to the Southwest. It should have been zoned to the Southeast. What do we have? We now, what we are hearing is North-South, North-South, North-South. <laughs> if we are zoning across the two regions, North and South, it therefore means that one particular region should not be allowed to produce the president at every given time. Okay. That's why I now said, if we want to do away with zoning, let us completely do away with zoning. Okay. And let it be, like as it were, survival of the fittest or whoever, uh, let the candidate that has the clout, the candidate that has the money. For okay. instance, I, I know that uh, whatever that will come out of this, particularly the two big political parties, the PDP and the APC. I can tell you that's not the will of the people. Okay. It is the will of money. Okay. Those that can be able to raise the millions, they are the ones that contested. Okay. I can even tell you, uh, maybe uh, it's by sheer law that those that contested came from a particular region. They came, some came from the north, some came from the southeast, and some came... But if you look at them, you will see the whole thing is an assemblage of millionaires or billionaires in Nigeria. All right. That does not in any shape or form reflect the re, uh, reflect Nigerians. All right. Let me come to Ihe because we are almost out of time. Ihe, where do we go from here? Because he's made very interesting points. It seems like a, uh, it's a convenient, you know, um, rhetoric to put out there every campaign season. How do we change the narrative going forward? Because we can't keep coming back here every election cycle. Um, I, 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 I totally, totally accept what he says when he, when he when he speaks to meritocracy. But you see, we have uh, six local government, six geopolitical zones, and seven hundred seventy-four local governments spread across the nation, mm -hmm. and there's meritocracy that exists in all of that. How do we change the narrative? Um, we need to look deep into the equitable distribution of uh, uh, political offices. Um, so I mean the two the two the two positions the two 
key parties, uh, APC and PDP, have uh, Southwest and the North. And then, incidentally, the Southeast um, has won in the Labour Party, even though it's not the front line, it's not considered the front line, so to speak. Um, but we need to begin to look at um, whoever is the winner must be magnanimous in victory mm. and actually implement federal character. Um, as for um, uh, Dr. Bunaya's um, position, this, the region, the Southeast region, which I am from, must bond together really strongly mm. and begin to reassert themselves now as for the now. Um, um, I would say you have a candidate already. We born around him mm. and we push for it. Um, on the other hand, we speak with one voice. Seven years ago, APC uh, flag, uh, flag bearer has started to plan. Mm. Yesterday, we saw governors from member Southwest states step down for him. Mm. He had done a handshake across the divide. We had about three or four candidates from Southeast extraction, and they all stood on the podium. Some stepped down for the South, Southwest candidate. No bonding together. These are very crucial, crucial, crucial points that we need, we need to take, take to heart. Well, um, unfortunately, time is not on our side, but we will revisit this conversation, of course, because campaign season is upon us, and there is a lot to talk about. But Ihe Ibeji uh, is a political analyst, and Obinna Chuku is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, Thank for being you very part much of the conversation. Me. All right. Well, this is where we wrap up on the show today. It's been a very interesting 20, 48 hours, if you ask me. But tomorrow is another day. We'll be talking for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening. <laughs>